Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. Take two. Take two. Take three. No, just two. I'm going to take two, not three, Evan. I'm going to do it. Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. One of the reasons that my customers gravitate towards these trucks instead of pickup trucks or medium duty trucks to pull their large fifth wheel trailers is the flexibility we have to carry things on the back of the truck. We're looking today at Drift. He's a 2011 model 730, so it's got a little bit shorter sleeper. But you'll see on the back we have added a skirted bed. It's got steel sides, we've got toolboxes in there. And what I want to talk about today is the options we have available for what can be carried on that bed and some of the implications for length. At RV Haulers, we build two kinds of beds. The one that Evan and I are going to demonstrate today. Yeah, let's put the ramps up, Evan. The one we're going to show off today is the one that uses the ramps. Certainly the less expensive solution uh, compared to our Phoenix bed. We have one that is a hydraulic bed that lifts up and comes down on the ground. But this one is the ramp bed. Now the most common vehicle that we put on our RV haulers is a smart cart. The reason for this is a smart cart is short enough that we can just get it on the bed width-wise. The first question everybody asks me is, is there anything else for an automobile that can be loaded on bed width-wise as we are with this car? The answer is no. Um, all of the other vehicles you start to look at, if you the measurements they are you know, about 10 feet long and they're gonna hang over way too much now I've got a separate video that talks about the smart cars if you've never driven a smart car you have to try it how's it look Evan Great. isn't it nice having young kids around to help you with this stuff is good Watch your toes. So we've designed our beds so that you've got a little bit of wiggle room there between the smart car and a drawn box or the leading edge of this fairing. Uh, even if you forget to fold that mirror in, you're still okay with my design. And the consideration we have to have at the back of the bed is when your fifth wheel is attached here at the ET Senior Hitch, you need to be able to jackknife your trailer 90 degrees and make sure that that edge of the trailer does not strike the smart car. You also have to consider that when you're coming into campgrounds, sometimes when you're backing up, the truck will not be on the same level as the trailer. And what I mean by that is you might have an opportunity where the trailer is tilted a little bit. So you could have your trailer tilted a little bit towards that smart car. So we've made sure that we have enough room for that hitch when the trailer's connected that it doesn't jackknife and strike the car. Another common question I get is whether there's the opportunity to load a vehicle from the back. So that would certainly allow us to carry a longer vehicle and one of the negatives of the smart car of course is that it is a two-seater. So if you're a family this isn't going to be a vehicle for you to be able to tootle around in with everyone in the car. It would only be good for some short trips uh, when you got to go do some shopping, etc. So the answer is yes, we can load a vehicle from the back of the bed. We can uh, change the winch configuration so that we're pulling a vehicle up. Of course, that is going to make some changes when it comes to the drawn box. But what I want to point out is an advantage of the smart car is it's not very wide. If you accommodate for the mirrors on either side, we're looking at about a 68 to perhaps a 72, 73 inch width that we need for the smart car. And then we've got approximately five feet for that jackknife of the trailer that I was telling you about. So when you start to put a longer vehicle on here, a lot of them are nine to 10 feet long. And let me show you, this is nine feet right here. So remember, I got to add another five feet of bed for the jackknife. 10 feet is here. So certainly, yes, we can load a vehicle lengthwise, 
But I want to point out another impact this has. Not only is it starting to lengthen our vehicle quite a bit, uh, if you're looking at carrying a heavy enough vehicle, believe it or not, we're going to start to look at leaving both of the axles in place. We have to stay a tandem axle. That does have some impacts depending upon what state or province you're in as to what your driver's license is. Sometimes you're no longer, in, depending upon your state, able to drive this with a standard driver's license. Another impact of loading a vehicle from the back of the bed and carrying it lengthwise is our overall rig length. In the United States as well as in Canada, there's a number of states that want to see us with our overall rig length of 65 feet or less. Here in Alberta, I can do 72. And this is a big discussion amongst folks that have these rigs. Probably 90% of my customers are over that 65 foot length. When it comes to our trailer lengths, when we have a vehicle like this, a model 730 or a 780, you've got to have about a 37 or a 38 foot trailer with a smart car bed in order to stay inside that 65 foot length. So a lot of my customers are well over that. One of the advantages of having a truck like this is that we can carry the big trailers. We can get our 40 footers, our 44, 45, 48, 53 foot trailers and still tow them safely with these rigs. So when you start to lengthen this bed, what's going to happen is the overall length of your rig starts to get really, really long. It also impacts your steering ability, so your turning radius increases as well. But certainly, you know, there's a bit of a, 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 a give and take here that we want what we want. And if you want a big trailer, we're going to get it. A, the large majority of my customers have traveled and full-timed even for years and never had issue with lengths. But can I promise that that's something that's not going to appear in the future? No, I, I don't have a crystal ball that works anymore. I can't tell the future, so um, it's something that you have to be aware of. And at present, it doesn't appear to be much of an issue, but certainly in the future it may be. My 11 takes a smart car off of drift. I want to talk about some of the other options we have for carrying vehicles up there. A lot of my customers have asked about golf carts. Of course, the answer is yes. You can certainly put one of those up there. Many times our golf carts are 98, 102, 101 inches long, so they'll certainly fit up there. So I've had people talk to me about loading uh, three-wheelers. So some motorcycle options are available to us, golf carts, ATVs. Um, we certainly have also some of our four-wheel ATVs, such as the Razors and some of the Polaris side-by-side -side equipment, or, or other brands too. Uh, remember, the width that's allowed legally on the bed is 102 inches. And some of our vehicles, certainly our newer model smart cars, are you know, just a few inches over that maximum width. But there too, I think it's something that really attention because it's not like it's some big squared object sticking out the side of the truck. Many times it's just the curvature of a wheel or the curvature of a bumper that might be sticking out a little bit. And what we like to do is stick that ex put that extra width on the passenger side so that oncoming vehicles don't see that as much. And we'll split the difference a little bit. We'll maybe put one or two inches on each side. And I don't think it really catches too much attention. Now, motorcycles are something we can load on these beds as well. And here's an option that I think uh, has some attraction to it. What we've done is Evan and I have changed out these ramps. We've put on a little bit wider ramp. Individually, these ramps are 19 inches. So in total, when we put them together, they're 38 inches. There's actually a bolt that uh, holds them together so they can't wiggle apart. And these ramps are a little bit longer. There we go. They're a little bit longer, so we've got a little bit more of even a gentler approach. So this breakover angle isn't quite as abrupt. And these ramps are also designed to carry 1,500 pounds per axle. So they're engineered for a smart car. They're also engineered 
so that we can have them put them together and run a motorcycle up. So I'm going to get Evan to bring in our uh, 1981 Honda Goldwing. Of course, uh, Harley Davidson will work, but all I've got to work with is uh, this really fancy Honda Goldwing. I think that's what they call it. <laughs> so what we'll do, we'll show you how this works. So again, we're going to use the ramp uh, and winch method. And I don't have one of those slings that goes around here, but we'll use my synthetic line on the winch. And it's got a little protective sleeve here, so that'll help from keeping things scratched. I know it's really a fancy gold wing, but we'll do it just this once. Now, I don't have this bed set up for it, but what's available instead of a wired winch control is a wireless one. And what we would do is Velcro it to your handlebar. And again, using the winch, uh, we would just using your hand control here, I would walk your Goldwing or your Harley Davidson up the ramps. It's really nice, super stable, nice and wide, nice and slow, we're under control. And when we get to the top, we would of course have a chalk mounted on the bed. And what we would also configure this bed for is for drive on and drive off. So once we got our motorcycles up on top of the bed, got them chalked and uh, got our tying them down. That's good, Evan. My hand the rest of the What we would do is now when we get to our destination, we would take these ramps, put them on the other side, just drive off. So I'd like to remind you, these ramps are engineered both for a motorcycle and for a smart car. So we would modify our ramp storage here wider to carry the two ramps. It's going to be a little bit longer too. But uh, this is an option. Now, one, one note about these ramps, they're uh, made by the same company that makes the ones I demonstrated for the smart car loading. These ones are a little bit lighter duty. They're rated for 1,500 pounds per axle. The ones we used with the smart car before, those are rated for 2,000 pounds. And I find when the smart car goes up these, there's some flex. And they're not my favorites. So if you're not gonna do the motorcycle option, um, I do recommend those other ramps just because they're a little bit stiffer. One note about these wider, a little bit longer ramps is they're a little bit heavier than the narrower ramps. That's another reason that if you have no intention of carrying a motorcycle, uh, maybe those narrower ramps are the way to go. Levin's going to put those ramps back in the shed. Well, you've seen we've got quite a bit of flexibility on how we can uh, design these beds to carry different uh, vehicles and toys. You know, our smart cars, our motorcycles, our golf carts three-wheelers and even carrying vehicles lengthwise on these beds is all an option that's available to you. And what I'd invite my viewers to do is if you've come up with some other ideas or you've got some other tests or some questions, please put them down there in the comments. I'm happy to answer those at any time. And I'd also like to point out to my customers that everything we do is custom. So I like to spend time with my customers learning how you're going to travel, what you're going to take with you, We'd really like to see if we can make our RV haulers suit your needs as well as we can. Well, I appreciate your comments. Certainly, uh, if you have any ideas, share them with us and you know how to reach us. You can find us on the web at www.rvhaulers.ca. Thanks for watching.